Hi everyone and welcome to another Out and About video and today we're over here in Bacup Cemetery and we're going to cover the tale of one of Rosendale's most notorious characters. He went by the nickname of the Bolliper of Rosendale but his real name was Moses Clayton. When Moses Clayton's body was laid to rest on Saturday 1st of March 1919 it will close the book on one of Rosendale's most notorious villains. A character that had once terrorised an entire district with his brutality and drunken carefree attitude would no longer pose a threat to the townsfolk of Accrington, Bacup, Haslingdon and Ronstall as well as other places such as Whitworth and Todmorden. I think it's safe to say that a lot of people have heard the term the Scuttlers and the street gangs of Manchester. And these were, like I said, these were gangs of criminals. Young lads who struck fear and terror into the hearts of the suburbs, if you will, within and around Manchester. But very little is ever talked about of an individual. Now here in Rosendale and the surrounding districts such as Haslingdon, Accrington, Hapton, Huncourt, Baycup, Darwin, um, Burnley, you could add into that, Whitworth, Tomerden. One man in particular known as Moses Clayton. Like I said, it was just one man but he did strike fear into everybody who he encountered. He even struck fear into people whom had never met the guy because his tales and his stories, you could say, were legendary, but for all the wrong reasons. Interestingly, one of the earliest accounts of Moses being in any kind of trouble with the authorities came in 1870 when he was just 13 years old. And he was arrested for some form of cruelty towards a horse. Now, even though he was 13, he, um, he was employed as a coal delivery or deliverer um, service. So he had a horse and cart and he used to transfer coal and drop it off you know, at different places. But apparently the horse itself was unfit for use. But he... Um, but he was using it nevertheless and he was arrested over in Salford. Now this is the first recorded incident that we've come across in the old newspaper archives of him being in any trouble and at the time he he never had any fines to pay and he never obviously had to do any time in prison. It was his, uh, his boss, his employer who obviously had to pay the said fine but um, it's no coincidence that this occurred the same year when his mother sadly passed away and this could have been the kickstart for a life in crime or you know he took the wrong pathway now there's a bit of a gap between 1870 up to 1875 in that we can't find any records of Moses in the in the papers um, but in 1875 this is when things seemingly started to escalate so he would have been what 16 perhaps nearly 17 and he stole an expensive fish from one of the shops or one of the small stores in Haslingdon from a William Gamson now I think it was valued at about 14 shillings or something like that so it was quite a serious charge at the time. Um, but this is the first known recording of Moses obviously being picked up by the police and charged with said theft. 
this was nothing though that was compared to what was going to come in the next few years and like I said it was only a young boy at the time when when he um, he took the wrong road if you will and it seemed to be that when his mother passed away this is when everything seemed to escalate he seemed to have a carefree attitude to the authorities and to anybody else who dared challenge him Born in 1857 to parents James and Susanna, Moses was just one of nine siblings and had spent much of his childhood and early teens living in and around Croucher Booth, within an area known as Lower Booths. In 1871, from the census records, we can see he was living at number 25 Holmes Terrace, along with his father James, four brothers and three sisters. His mother had sadly passed away in 1870 at the age of 44. On January the 2nd, 1879, a man named James Shuttleworth, who had uh, he'd visited a pub called the Sportsman's Inn over in Halifax, he met up with Moses, um, and Moses was be basically begging for some spare change. Um, and James, being the, the man he was, obviously decided to try and help. So he took Moses to another pub, as well as obviously the sportsman's in, they went back there and they had a couple of drinks together. Um, he also gave some pennies, some shillings to, to Moses. But when both men left and apparently went their separate ways, James was making his way back to his home, which went too far away. But it seems Moses had other ideas. And as James got obviously got closer to the farmhouse where he lived, Moses had obviously gone in a different direction but got there before him. So he obviously had an inkling of who James was and perhaps James also knew who Moses was. Uh, but for whatever reason, Moses had arrived back at James's farmhouse before James did. But Moses wasn't alone, he had an accomplice. And it was on the pathway, on the lane leading up to the house, where James was attacked by both men. And it was quite a vicious attack at the time. And um, as they laid into James, Moses pulled a knife out, he leant over James, who was by now on the floor because of the beating he took. And uh, Moses leaned over him and pulled a knife out, threatening him that if he goes to the police, he'll slit his throat. So it was quite a serious, serious beating and obviously threatening, threatening James with his life if he went to the authorities. But this didn't deter James. And um, it was only a couple of hours after the attack, he made his way to the police station where obviously he sought the help of the police. Now it was Police Constable Price who had obviously took the call from James and he off he went to, uh, in search of Moses. But it'd take three days before his arrest. And um, Moses by all accounts went with PC Price uh, to Tomenden Police Station without any fuss. And he actually asked PC Price, what do you think will happen with him? He says, because I don't think they'll hang me for it. And obviously PC Price couldn't answer that. And he said, well, you know, obviously I don't know what's going to happen. But yeah, he was charged with, obviously, the, the attack on James Roundsbottom. Now, four months later, on the 1st of May, Moses appeared at the York Assizes. And he was charged with using personal violence to and robbing James Shuttleworth of four shillings, four, uh, four pounds, ten shillings. But because by this time, he had had other convictions uh, convictions against him, ones which unfortunately we've not been able to corroborate just yet. But by all accounts, he had plenty of other convictions against his name by this time, and these were used against Moses. Um, and ultimately, he will be sentenced to 12 months hard labour with three years police supervision upon his release. In one newspaper in 1880, 
Moses Clayton was described as being roughly five foot seven and three quarter inch high. He had brown hair, blue eyes, pale complexion, but by all accounts he was a quite a stocky character, and he was he was a man that could obviously look after himself. Now he also had a distinctive scar on one side of his face. I think it was on the right hand side, um, and this quite. Oh, I should say this made him stand out so obviously th as later in life you know his stories became synonymous with like I said the surrounding areas such as Bacup, Darwin, Accrington, Haslingdon and all the other places I've mentioned previously you know as soon as a guy walked into one of the public houses at the time and especially if he had a score in his face on the right hand side of his face then yeah I, I guess you could say one or two people's you know, heads were turned and um, they were probably fearful of of who had just walked in. So yeah, he did have a reputation that kind of followed him. And it wasn't long before he also got the nickname Bolloper. Now, last night, just before I went to bed, I was researching a little bit more into the story to see what his background, his family was like, to see if he had any history in the family of violence. Um, and up until last night, I couldn't find anything. But then one story appeared and it was about a guy called Clayton. All we've got is a surname Clayton who lived at Lower Booths in 1857. Now we've got to bear in mind Moses, Moses was born in 1857 and he lived in Lower Booths. Now this chap, this couch called Clayton was arrested for exposing himself. Now in the very times that ran a report about this it made headlines because the police officer who arrested Clayton he also asked for the assistance of a chap called James Roundsbottom who was nearby and this Roundsbottom chap refused to help so not only was Clayton arrested but also was this Roundsbottom fella and this is what the story in the papers was about it wasn't really about Clayton it was about Roundsbottom but interestingly, when it went to courts and there were other witnesses uh, from obviously the event that took place that evening, one of them, one of the lady witnesses said that Bolliper Clayton uh, was a friendly enough chap, never really got into trouble. So I can only assume that this story and this, this Clayton fella was in fact Moses Clayton's father. And like I said, Moses, if he was born at this point, because we don't know exactly when he was born. We know it was 1857, but we don't know the exact date. So this could well be Moses's father. So yes, he was arrested for exposing himself. And like I said at the start, I couldn't really find anything else on his family history or you know any other records of violence in the family. But yeah, that was an interesting find last night, which you know, it could point to the fact he had a violent father or his father was known for outbursts of violence. It's an interesting one and uh, it's one I'm going to try and look up a little bit more, you know, for a follow-up story, if indeed we ever do a follow-up to this one. Now, the attack on James Shuttleworth was vicious, you know, in all extremities. And this was the precursor of even worse what was to come later in life. Now. Moses himself was arrested many, many times for drunk and disorderly behaviour. But most of the time, he also would attack the police officers that were sent to arrest him. Now, he did more time in prison simply for attacking police officers, not for being drunk and disorderly. He got fined for that more often than not. But it was the attacks on police officers, and many of them were really vicious in nature. Now whether it was whilst he was serving time behind bars or it was something that had been building up for months prior to his attack on James Shuttleworth, something had changed Moses. We could perhaps say it was the death of his mother that had sent him on a spiralling path of self-destruction, but we will just never know. But the facts are he had gone from petty stealing to becoming a drunkard who was being apprehended by the police within the different districts of Rosendale on a regular basis. And he was now getting a name for himself and a reputation that came with it. And in such a short space of time, Bolliper would become the word that struck fear on those who dared whisper his name.
Now the most horrific attack and extreme attack came in 1882 when Moses he was over in Accrington in the Uncourt area on Hapton area and a man named Armred Holden was making his way home and he encountered Moses who was begging on the streets and Moses like he did with James Shuttleworth a few years prior he had asked Armrod if he could spare some loose change now Armrod just like James being the man he was found you know some loose change pass it over to Moses and they also invited him into one of the public houses now the two men they had a few drinks there but then another chap appeared and it was whilst walking along back down Burnley Road Moses and his accomplice launched into an almighty attack on Armrod Holden leaving him badly bruised and scarred and whatnot so obviously and again just like all the other attacks that Moses had launched upon people in the previous years he warned Armrod not to go to the police which Armrod Holden did so the police officers went off out and uh, they went looking for Moses and when they came into another pub Moses had seen the police officers entering the premises and he scarped out through one of the back doors and a god almighty chase took place where two police officers and Moses were running along fields now the thing is the fields over in Hapton Uncourt at the time were immense and there was a lot of forestry and what happened was um, Moses basically got away, he climbed over a wall and through some hedges and through some trees and bracken or whatever and he got away but that didn't stop there because a few days later Moses was seen in Rottenstall by PC Stott and PC Stott would eventually apprehend Moses but not after a violent struggle um, and PC Scott, Stott himself he actually got an award in November for his bravery and for his duty you know in apprehending Moses um, it was a big case at the time uh, and like I said Moses he was he was on a path of self-destruction at this point he, he couldn't care less he didn't care about who was harming how he was doing it he didn't care if he got caught by the police or what time he did but anyway Moses I think he, at the time he got around 18 months in prison with hard labor but he also had to suffer the humility of taking a flogging I think it was called the cat at the time but he had, to take, he had to take 30 strokes of the cat, which for Moses was a massive, massive, well, it was an embarrassment to him, wasn't it? Because he was the hard man of Rosendale and he was now being flogged as part of his punishment and he didn't take this too kindly. Despite finding himself on the wrong side of the law for pretty much his entire life, no amount of time in prison and the dozens of fines he had been made to pay would have any effect on Moses Clayton. If anything, they had their reverse effect and within months of being released from prisons, he would yet again find himself in a court of law having to face the consequences of his actions. Many of the offences he committed had been down to being drunk and during many of his outbursts, he would often end up fighting the police officers who had been sent to arrest him. Now we've actually found the final resting place of Moses Clayton, the bolloper of Rosendale the man that struck fear into anybody who he encountered and obviously those who he didn't encounter but you'll see on his gravestone on the headstone it simply says E440 James Clayton and we know obviously James was his father his mother was Susanna but this is the final resting place of Moses Clayton it looks like the headstone has sunk but we have actually tried to have a look further down in the grass and we can't feel any more engravings or inscriptions on the headstone but yeah this is the final resting place of Moses Clayton Now the thing with the Armrod Holden situation was when he actually went to the Assizes and he was obviously found guilty of the offences this is the type of character he was but he stuck his tongue out at the judge and he said some in, unintangible or some words which obviously were offensive at the time um, 
and he also said something to the crowd you know and they all started laughing this is the contempt he had obviously not just with people in general but with the authorities the people who were paid to look after the peace he just didn't care less Moses like I said he didn't have any empathy one could say perhaps he was psychotic for what he did and what he was about to do um, he just did not have any 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 empathy whatsoever towards people and the authorities especially um, it was such a hard case a criminal and it seemed that no matter how much prison time that he was serving he wasn't learning his lesson or he didn't want to learn any lessons he would do time no matter what and come out and just carry on doing more time carry on committing crimes carry on mugging people carry on robbing people he just didn't care less in 1902 another example of Moses's violence escalating it came when he had attended another public inn with a man called Cornelius Witham now like I said both men they'd had drinks they'd spent time together and Moses was accompanied accompanied I should say by again another accomplice and it seems that after a few drinks Moses had leaned over to Cornelius and put his hand in one of his pockets and withdrew some money now Cornelius at the time turned around and said something on the effect of that's robbed me but Moses just laughed and he told his accomplice to meet him outside in the backyard which they did and it was here that Moses handed over I think it was either four shilling or a five shilling piece so what happened afterwards is when both men came back into the pub Cornelius said to Moses give me back my money I'm gonna to go to the authorities which obviously Moses he couldn't care less um, he wouldn't give him his money back so Cornelius did he disappeared and I think it was um, PC Bell who was charged with trying to find Moses and which he did now the thing is with this story is Moses started fleeing the pub and he again like in the Armrod Holden story he fled over some fields but PC Bell, the man he was, he wasn't going to give up and he chased him for up to three hours. It was a three hour chase over Moorland. But in between the running, both men had got into scraps. Now, PC Bell had to use the, the bat and his truncheon, if you will, on, on, on a few occasions to try to weaken and obviously disarm Moses. Now, Moses pulled out a knife in one account, um, but like I said, PC Bell was pretty quick on the mark. And despite being punched and kicked and bitten, PC Bell was bitten on the bridge of the nose quite severely, um, he still got up and carried on chasing Moses over the hills and moors. And like I said, this was a three hour chase over Moorland. Now, at the time when they got to some like main road, if you will, or a pathway, two other guys turned up and they also helped PC Bell try to apprehend Moses. The thing is with Moses, like I said at the beginning, it was a hefty character, it was quite tall, quite sturdy, could look after himself, knew he choose his fist basically. But neither three men could um, detain Moses. So PC Bell, after another encounter, another fight with him, carried on chasing over the moors. Now Moses was flagging at this point, he was you know obviously losing a bit of energy. And um, as PC Bell approached him in one part of the field, as he was trying to get over a wall and some hedgerows, he pulled out the knife again, but he has a stone in his other hand. And as um, PC Bell got closer to Moses, he threw the stone at him uh, and it caught him on the head. It basically created a big cut on the forehead of PC Bell and it knocked him to the ground. So Moses went over to PC Bell. Meanwhile, the other two guys who were helping him were further along the field. They weren't near at the time. But Moses crouched over PC Bell and he picked up the same stone he'd thrown at him and he proceeded to smash him over the head. It knocked out two of PC Bell's teeth, caused more cuts and abrasions to his face. Um, and then he also picked up the knife. Now he had a knife and he put it to PC Bell's throat, saying he's gonna slit his throat and cut out his liver. Luckily, and just in time, the two other witnesses had arrived on the scene and they pulled Moses off PC Bell. Um, it was quite horrific from all accounts. PC Bell's face was absolutely disfigured beyond belief, but he still had the strength and willpower to get up. Now, because again, Moses was a bit weakened at this point from all the running, they managed to get him on the floor and detain him by using some rope of sorts or some shoelaces or something to uh, to tie his, his arms and legs together. And they managed to drag him across a few fields to another public lane where another witness, K 
came by in a milk cart. So the they basically commandeered the milk carts and they threw Moses into the back of it where they then could transport him to the police station. But when they got to the police station at Keithley Green in Burnley, PC Bell was unrecognisable apparently to his superiors. They couldn't recognise him. His face was that badly, badly smashed to pieces, if you will. His clothing, his police tunic was saturated in blood. But PC Bell survived, only just. Because if it wasn't for the two witnesses who managed to get to the field in time, Moses most certainly would have killed PC Bell. Now for that attack alone on the police officer, Moses would serve five years imprisonment, by far the longest stretch he'd ever faced in prison. And from all accounts, even though he'd, he'd, he'd served five years and he did hard labour, it still wouldn't change his attitude to people. On, the, on his release, it was back to his old tricks. He was robbing people, he was being drunk and disorderly. Um, it was being arrested. It was being fined four shillings, 10 shillings, 15 shillings. He just would not learn his lesson. He was a man that could not control his temper. So as we know, Moses was interred here at Bacup Cemetery on the 1st of uh, March, 1919. It was a man who lived on the edge. And as I said in the story, he had a lack of empathy probably could you know one could say was psychotic he just didn't care less about himself and especially other people now after his death long after his death from all accounts his name will become legendary in these parts which is quite surreal because of the heartache he caused people because of the threats of death he made to people for the upheaval he made in people's lives but it became legendary for some reason now, we have to remember that we can't let fiction get in the way of fact. First and foremost, he was a thug. He was a violent man. You know, what he did to these people throughout a, what, a 50 or 55 year reign. He died at the age of 61 and he was born in 1857. So he could say a 50 year reign of terror all around the districts of Rosendale. And I keep saying it, Accrington, Blackburn, Burnley, Huncourt, Hapton, Haslingdon, Bacup, Tomadon, Whitworth and there's plenty others wherever he went he, he left a path of destruction behind him um, so we can't let fiction get in the way of fact in this story he was a thug he was psychotic he was a criminal of the highest order at the time um, and I've just seen his grave just behind us his name's not even on it now whether or not his name's further down the headstones headstone sunk it's hard to tell but we see James Clayton his father's name on the headstone but yeah, he was a character around these parts in Rosendale. Um, it's an interesting story, it's a fascinating story. It is one I think that we perhaps could come to as more information comes to light. But um, it seems like his nickname, the Bolloper, definitely, definitely suited him. And it's, an, it's a name that seemed to be synonymous with trouble back in the 1800s, early 1900s. Because every time the police went into a public house to try to arrest him the first thing they used to ask the public and the landlord is is Bolloper here So many thanks for taking time to watch this video today. I hope you found it fascinating. Uh, tell me your thoughts on Moses Clayton and his reign of terror. Have you heard of his name before? Have you heard the tales of Moses? Um, if so, comment down below and tell me what you thought. Uh, we came across this story unexpectedly quite a few weeks ago. Um, and I came across a couple of tales of his, a couple of newspaper articles when he was arrested. But I just kept searching and dig digging deeper into the newspaper archives and it's just incredible what we found this guy had 71 convictions by his mid 40s which was basically nearly two a year until he was about 44 45 and up to the age of 61 when he died he was still being convicted so his conviction record for me perhaps was over 100 
but yeah um tell me what you think of this story and this character like i said it's a fascinating story and one i will hope to come back to in the future but in the meantime from just opposite james's and moses's grave take care look after yourselves and we will be back soon with another tale from our glorious and interesting past